Thank you and good afternoon, everybody. Um, just want to thank you all for joining this uh, Q4 earnings call. Um, just wanted to start off and say it's been a very exciting quarter for the company. And uh, we had also uploaded a presentation, which I'll go through a few slides to give you all a, uh, an idea of what the company's performed through this quarter. I think on first page five, uh, you know, I want to highlight that uh, revenue has grown by 52%, profit after tax from by 43% in Q4. We are still the number one automotive portal in India, the largest used car classified business, the largest vehicle auction platform. Almost 17 million unique customers in our platforms, OLX, Carvale, Bikewale, et cetera, in the last, per month, at an average of per month in the last quarter. OLX, as you know, also has 100 million downloads on the phone, on the, on an, on a phone. The 350 plus physical locations now for us, 90% of our 70 million customers a month come organically, which means we don't pay for this traffic. Our auction platform, Sriram Auto Mall and the remarketing group had 1.2 million vehicles auctioned last year. Our revenues for the quarter of Q4 are the highest ever at almost 161 crores. Our adjusted EBITDA is also the highest ever uh, in a quarter, which was at 49.1 crores for the quarter. And a profit after tax was 25 crores in Q4 FI24. As you know, we are a debt free company and a strong cash balance of almost 750 crores. Um, when you go to the consolidated results, which is page six of your presentation, as you can see here, the same that the revenues grew by 52%, the operating revenue grew by 52% for the quarter. The uh, year ended uh, revenues have grown by 37%. As you know, your OLX is only there eight months in the year, uh, consolidated from August 11th. Um, if you see the adjusted EBITDA was highest at 49.1 crores for Q4. The EBITDA without other income, without our interest income, was up 77% for the quarter. And the adjusted EBITDA without other income, without all our interest income for the whole year, went up 63% or almost 100 crores. Um, if you see the profits of the company, the PVP was 29.72 crores in the quarter, on the highest ever again, up by 30%. The PVD for the year was 98 crores versus 60 crores, which is up 62%. And a profit after tax for continuing operations was up 103%, which doubled from 40 crores to 82 crores during the year. The profit, including discontinued operations, was 25 crores for the quarter. So it's been a very healthy financial and strong financial performance for the quarter four. If you go to slide seven, which is our standalone results, if you see, I think this is one of the things which most of you have asked is on our margins for our standalone business in the quarter. The margin have grown from last year 19% to this year 26% for the quarter, which has shown a sharp increase in our margin, which is adjusted EBITDA margin without other income. This is has sharply grown up. Um, our revenues have grown up by 20% on a standalone basis for the year. Our adjusted EBITDA is up 41% during the year, uh, excluding other income, which shows that our adjusted EBITDA is going up at double the rate of our revenues. And profit after tax on standalone basis up 29%. It is slightly lower at 29% up because uh, of the reduction in our interest income because of the acquisition of OLX. So um, really it's been a strong performance on the standalone business as well and margins have grown out there. If you look at slide eight, which is our remarketing results, um, even though it's been a slack year in terms of revenues for it, its profits have slightly improved 8% in this quarter. Adjusted EBITDA is up 8%. In fact, adjusted EBITDA at 16.3 crores is also reasonably good with 29% margins. Uh, but on the whole, revenues have been flat in this business and profits have been uh, also flattish during this current year. And this is a fact of repossession, uh, vehicle supply coming down, uh, which has been mostly replaced by our retail supply of vehicles. If you look at slide nine, which is the OLX, India results or Sobek auto results. Uh, as you've seen here, we had last quarter a discontinuing continuing operations. Now this quarter, March 31, you only have a continuing operations. And as we had indicated at that time, the revenue is now at close to 45 crores and the profit of the adjusted EBITDA is close to 11 crores, uh, which is very similar to last quarter. Some marginal costs have gone up from the last quarter, which have come to the continuing business. But overall, it's almost at a nine crore profit for the quarter. And we're quite confident of sustaining and growing this from here. It's a tremendous base. As I said, a lot of the work last year for OLX India has been, uh, you know, the technology transfer, uh, putting together the product and the technology team, 
uh, getting the management team in place, shutting down the loss-making businesses, and all that has been completed. And as you can see in quarter four, a completely only classified result of 45 crores and 11 crores profit out here. Um, you know, this is what I had to say. In fact, the brand also on Google Trends, if you see slide number 11, shows strength of the brands of Carwale and Bikewale. On slide 12, you can see the brand of OLX continue to be strong. Um, and as I said, our traffic continues to grow. So this is what I had. I'm happy to open up for questions and answers now to answer all your quick and clarify all your questions and doubts. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wish to ask a question may press star and one on their touch tone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have our first question from the line of Mr. Vijit Jain from City. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks. Um, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, hi, Annie. Right. Um, congratulations on a you know pretty terrific results um, uh, here that we can see across the three businesses. Uh, my first question is uh, for the OLX India classified business: Are we looking at what will now be the recurring cost structure for this business now? And also, if you can, you know, talk a little bit about growth in this segment, because uh, since you acquired this company, it seems to be uh, somewhere around 43 crores a quarter revenue. Uh, business pretty steady at that. So your thoughts on that? That's my first question. Thank you. Thanks. The OLX the costs are uh, fully now. This is what the costs are. I think this pretty, the continuing operation is probably steady state. Um, the, 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 the reflection of the financial Q4 are the reflections of steady state for this business. Obviously, our attempt is just to grow this 44 crore quarter revenue from here. And and it is a typical you know uh, classic, classified kind of marketplace where as revenue grow, costs don't grow in relation to the revenues. And you'll see that now in the next few quarters, that as our revenue continues to grow here, that uh, profitability will rise at double the pace, which is, as you see, in even in even the consumer group. I mean, as revenue grow, our profits tend to grow at one and a half or two times the speed of revenue is uh, growing. And we, we want to have the same dynamics here, where increase in revenue, increase multiplies growth in profits. I think this is a leverage we have on our costs. Again, here, there's very low marketing costs, almost zero marketing costs. And um, reasonably, um, you know, high leverage uh, to profitability with revenue growth. Got it. And, um, you know, any thoughts on uh, sharing more, uh, you know, uh, metrics around OLX India, you know, traffic trends, category-wise mix, those kinds of things, now that, you know, this business is, uh, you know, on a recurring basis? Yeah, sure. We will, and, and I think the traffic tends to be about 30 odd million users a month. Uh, uh, as I said, a large part of it is on an app on, 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 an app on a phone. Uh, uh, almost all of it is, I mean, zero net of marketing. There's no marketing cost to this revenue, to this traffic, sorry, uh, which is making it, you know, giving it, uh, the, the OLX business strong margins. Um, We'll, we'll, we'll start sharing the traffic metrics with you, I mean, very soon. I mean, now that there's some stability, uh, that's something we'll start doing. Uh, if you look at the segmentation also, uh, automotive tends to be about 45, 50%, the rest is non-automotive. Uh, that's the other segmentation of the classified revenues, which also, you know, over time, we'll start sharing in a breakup of automotive and non-automotive. Correct. Thanks, Vinay. my next question is on the remarketing business. Um, uh, so, uh, fair to say that uh, overall, uh, this business seems to have bottomed out from here. Uh, I mean, I, I see the volumes are still down on a YOY basis, but yeah. uh, the decline seems to have uh, reduced and revenues are flattish YOY now. For declining for three, four quarters. So that's my first question on the remarketing business. And is this coming from, uh, you know, continuing growth in the retail side or has the repo business also bottomed out? Uh, yeah, that's my first definitely, question. Uh, the repo is flattish now. Uh, so it's bottom to flattish. The repo, uh, um, and, and it actually the last quarter is still going down, but we're hoping that it is flat now uh, from this year. Actually, last year it has begun. And we're hoping that it's flat uh, this year. Uh, but it's hard to predict. I think what's driving even the flattest nature of this business is the retail growth. I think clearly, which we're putting tremendous effort to continue to grow. Uh, that doesn't change how we're thinking about the business. So we continue, we need to continuously grow what's in, you know, and what we have control on, which is the retail business. The repo business will bounce back as and when it does. So 
you know, uh, uh, we are hoping that it's flat, flattened out and it's, it's, it's bottomed out. Right? Not flattened out. We're hoping it's bottomed out. But, you know, we thought that last year and it still went down. So, you know, we're just looking and saying, listen, what's in our control is doing all the other source, supply sources and focus on that. But, but we do believe it should have bottomed out, yeah. Got it. And my last question is for Anisha, uh, just on this. Uh, so I just, if I just look at, you know, the costs below EBITDA line, right, and the balance sheet and the cash flow statements, if you can just talk about, uh, you know, the lease cost trends, the financing costs, and the working capital intensity for the full year F24 versus mm-hmm. F23, and if there's anything to, you know, uh, understand over there, that will be helpful. Sure, Vijay. So uh, I think it remains a consolidated set of accounts because it has OLX in it. It looks like a jump. But if you go independently, uh, these are static costs. There's uh, barely move because we don't have debt in the company, so we don't have any finance costs. So the only increase you see is uh, on account of lease accounting. Right. Uh, and uh, why have the lease, uh, lease costs gone up so much? Is that all... Um... Uh, related to OLX itself, or uh, you know, uh, there are lease cost increases related to the remarketing business as well. So it's, it's just disclosed independently in each of the slides. With it, so if you look at the standalone entity, hmm. there's right. uh, the total finance cost itself is only 16 lakhs, and uh, including depreciation, that cost is increased, in, uh, increased only by about 1.6 crores in the quarter, which hmm. includes. Right and finance costs. So majority of the increase is on account of the OLX acquisition, but uh, standalone and remarketing have also marginally increased on account of additional leases that we have taken, mainly in remarketing and uh, standalone business, one new property that we have added or one new floor that we have added in the uh, business. Oh, okay, got it, got it, great. Yeah, I think th- uh, those are my initial questions. I'll just get back into the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Siddhar Bera from Nomura. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats on the great set of numbers. Uh, sir, first question on the OLX side again. I mean, uh, what, would it be possible to share some insights into what can sort of help improve the run rate from current levels, which are the areas you plan to target in the first year, and uh, when can we see that sort of benefit uh, sort of coming in the revenues? It can be both on monetization or the segments which you think... Uh, can help us sort of scale up faster. Was the question on how we go to revenues? I mean, simply, I mean, was that? Yes, yes, that OLX, right. 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 Uh, yeah, so OLX has got two sizes. It's got auto and it's got non-auto. Uh, as I said, 45, 50% is auto. Within auto, uh, it's used cars, basically. Uh, um, and obviously, we believe that the used car classified business is a, 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 you know, lots of runway to grow. Um, and OLX is uh, obviously focused on things, uh, on focused on growing used car classified revenues by adding more dealers, by increasing our group per dealers, providing more value to the dealers, increasing traffic and supplying more traffic to dealers. So it's it's a typical classified model of dealers paying subscription revenues uh, uh, for listing vehicles. And uh, as I said, the 30 million customers who come to OLX, and that is why dealers list on on this platform. So. Clearly for us in the immediate future, uh, I would say next you know, two quarters would be you know, focusing on the use classified business, something we understand well as a group. Um, and that would be the big focus for, I would say, next two, two quarters. You know, post the two quarters, uh, we're also extremely optimistic about the non-auto side. The non-auto side has got homes, jobs, electronics, two wheelers, uh, primarily, and household items, and household. The idea is to grow those five segments as well. Uh, and obviously, we're putting together a plan of action, a team, et cetera, et cetera, in those segments, which will probably take you know a couple of quarters for us to uh, you know understand better and then focus on growth there. But it's a two, two almost like a short-term growth objective and a little you know uh, I would say, I would say an immediate plan of action, which is going to use cars, and a short-term would be the non-automotive segments, and of course then in the medium and long-term going other segments as well, which are not here even there today. So. The intent would be to focus on growth over the next one, two, three years in, in OLX. And the multiple, in fact, that we believe the time is just unlimited. So so whether it is used car, whether it is non-automotive, in many ways, it's, it's enhanced the time of the entire group, not just OLX. 
audit sir and just a clarification on this olx again i mean when we acquired this entity we had highlighted it had about 35 million plus maus now we are talking about 30 million so has there been any uh, moderation or uh, this is the way accounting has changed or something like i think I, i think we are also finding ways of it's about 30 odd million now but but it's it's also about uh, how uh, analytics are work our analytics work and we have given a brief indication that it was but we also move from a global environment to our environment and the analytics related to it so the traffic is pretty steady i don't think uh, in fact it's it's now we see uh, uh, you know uh, there's a marginal growth we see uh, but it's also how the analytics are laid out in this business okay okay got it sir so second question on this uh, standard on business or the consumer business uh, here we have seen growth rate sort of slightly coming up from say beginning early 20s to now mid teens uh, over the last one year so going ahead with the industry tailwinds from like the supply uh, normalizing inventory levels building up uh, do we expect that the growth here can be uh, faster as we go ahead into the year because uh, oems will need to spend more to sort of get customers so any thoughts or any indications you are seeing here in the new car business in fy 23 we were about more than 40% about 40% i think and this year it's about 20% right uh, the new car the new vehicle business for the consumer group and i think uh, the car industry last year grew by 8% so it's clearly ahead of the car industry and it's also grown at 20% last year on a very on a higher base of growth the previous year we genuinely we've always indicated this that this is the rate of growth we normally see in these businesses um and the car industry is reasonably i would say demand has been strong and supply has been strong which is a good place to be i would say both both demand and supply are reasonably strong uh in fact we had marginal growth in the car industry in april as, a, as you know the uh, car companies have declared their volumes but last year the car industry by 8% what of analysts i see and manufacturers are here i think they think the car industry will be between 0 and 5% growth this year they believe that um i i think that's reasonably okay for for the consumer group when you have that level of growth because it's growing on a high base too okay okay so lastly in terms of anisha for you basically just uh, wanted to clarify this that the presentation says that the cash balance is about 750 crores but uh, if you look at the balance sheet uh, the investments and cash in banks the numbers add up to close to 670 crores so uh, just if you can point out where the remaining number is uh, sort of sitting so should be you will see in the caption called investments the others will be in other balance sheets okay okay so can the reserve cost of 6 crore per, sorry sorry so so i just was mentioning this isop cost of 6 crore per quarter so this is now a sustainable generate for the next year also or should we expect some normalization uh, in this number so we can expect uh, uh, we can expect the isop cost to be around this range in the next year okay okay thanks anisha welcome back thank you A reminder to all participants: You may press star and one to ask questions. We have a next question from the line of Ankit Kanugia from Smart Singh. Please go ahead. Thank you for taking my question and congratulations on the set of the Thank you. Yeah. So uh, my first question is related to uh, numbers. So uh, in the OLX business, uh, this quarter we have seen a rise in ease of finance and uh, depreciation costs. So, any color on to whether this will be continued in the subsequent quarters, or we expect some moderation here? Yeah, I think all OLX costs are almost like steady now. I I think once you anticipate that some of this will, I mean, this will be a reflection of costs. And then almost one. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, trade receivables have almost jumped. Uh, I think uh, 50% uh, compared to last year. What What is this trade receivable? If you can Uh, very tight. What are the nature of trade receivables? Uh, Anisha, you can add on, but I'll, I'll just trade receivables, receivables from customers, which could be manufacturers or or advertising agencies, um, um, and that's the nature of it. I think with revenue growth of fifty percent, trade receivable accordingly grown as well. I think that's the ratio. Anisha, you want to add on to anything? Yes, and in fact, uh, even in the trade receivables, uh, there will be an element of OLX which gets added because what they are looking at is the consolidated set of accounts. So there is about a ten crore number which is from OLX, which is added to the base. Okay. Uh, do you expect that OLX number to come down in the subsequent quarters? Yeah, we 
So this uh, trade retrieval of oil is basically from the continuing business, not from the discontinuing business. Yes, yes, right? it's from the same business. Okay, okay, okay. Now, uh, same question is related to the synergy. So what I uh, see in cartridge journey is that we have acquired several business over several times, but I still find it uh, unable to understand how the synergy playing out because I see Carvalho as a separate platform. I see uh, Shira Motomal as a completely different separate. Uh, similarly, OLX also is a wonderful platform, but uh, how are we synergizing the benefit of all these uh, different platforms? Because I don't see that synergy coming in, uh, maybe I'm unable to understand, but uh, if you can throw some more light as to what we are working in and uh, in how many quarters we can see that synergy uh, benefit accruing to the company, that would be very helpful. I think the first thing I want to clarify when we require a company, we, we try and look at synergy, but we also try and make sure these businesses are good on a standalone basis. Which means that if there is no synergy applied to any of these businesses, they must grow uh, revenues, margins, and customer experience in their own field independently. So these acquisitions are not done only for synergy, they were done as good independent businesses too. Of course, we believe there are customer synergy. For example, if a used car dealer today is bidding for a vehicle on Shida Motor Mall, that same dealer is listing a car on Rolex or Carwale for sale. So that's the obvious customer journey, uh, synergy, right? If a, person is, if a consumer is coming to Carwale and sell a car uh, or buy a new car, it's also selling an, a used car on Rolex, right? The same customer. So there is a lot of customer synergy which exists across, which is not apparent to everybody, uh, but exists across these platforms. Just so also when we acquired Carwale, Carwale had a used car classified business and car trade had a used car classified business. So the first thing we did with Synergy was we allowed dealers who are selling used cars to list on one technology platform, cars on Carwale and car trade seamlessly, which means if you're a dealer and you want to sell a car, earlier you'd have to go to Carwale separately and then buy a separate package with car trade and then list your car. Here, on one list, you can do it with both. Obviously, when we look acquired OLX, the intent would be that if you're a used car dealer using Carvale and you're using OLX, the intent would be, which is what our tech team is now currently working on, that if you want to sell your car on Carvale or OLX with one press or one button, you can go onto both platforms, which gives dealers an access to both platforms, gives consumers to access from both inventory in both places, and obviously it helps us monitor the dealer better. So, so some of these synergies, whether it's customer synergies, whether it is technology synergies, we've been exploiting. Uh, over the last many years. I, I, I think, and we've always tried to work at Synergy in our, in, at least in, in the group has been on a very arm's length win-win uh, basis, which means we don't enforce Synergies on our teams. If if uh, we if they believe there's a win-win relationship with another sister concern, then they choose to work with them. And it's always on, always a, completely on arm's length basis. And that's the way we function. But there are a lot of customer and obvious technology Synergies out here. Great, thank you so much. I will give you some yeah. examples. I've only given two, three examples of it, but yeah. Yeah, yeah and uh, uh, I think you only missed the uh, Shira Motomal, uh, Automall. Yeah. Shira Motomal. So Shira Motomal, there are two, two, three obvious images. Dealers buying vehicles in Shira Motomal, list on Carvale for sale. So that same dealer is being tapped by the group in two different places. So that's the first, you know, customer synergy which exists automatically. But I think the one we are trying uh, to make work, to be honest, which is harder. Is people coming to Carvale or now OLX to list their car for sale, consumers like you and me, can we get them to auction the vehicle on Shira Motor Mall? And that's been a harder challenge than we think. Uh, but that would be the other obvious synergy, which is still not fully exploited, I would say. Yeah, if you can still share some data related to like what you said just now, I mean, yeah. where uh, a dealer who has uh, auctioned the car can also sell the car uh, on Carvale. So if you can share some data related to how many uh, cross-selling opportunities or those things are there, I think that would be very helpful to I think, us. I think for, for me, from a competitor angle, we won't want to publicly share the data. But but I'll tell you one thing. That I, in fact, I said something else. I said dealers were buying vehicles on Shida Motor Mall are also yeah, selling on Car Valley or Alex. I think the other way now. Yeah. But, but uh, you know, obviously, due to competitive dynamics of the business, I'm not sure whether we will want to give out number of dealers using all our platform, et cetera, et cetera. Right, right, right. One last question related to the standalone number. So, uh, over the year, it is showing 20% uh, growth, but uh, towards the last quarter, it is showing only 15% growth. What yeah. would be the reason uh, uh, for this uh, 
No, no reason as such. Uh, um, I, 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 I just think that even the last base of last year was probably higher, but but no reason as such. The Q4 was probably the best quarter in the consumer group ever. Anyway, so of course the best quarter ever. So I don't think there's any anything at all. Nothing, nothing from a business standpoint we've seen. So I know that you don't provide any guidance, but uh, generally, to 20 to 25 percent uh, growth rate is uh, achievable in the foreseeable future. Also, in the standalone business. Yeah, I, as I said earlier, we tend to grow those rates of in, in, in decent years. You know, our track record is that. So I, I don't want to talk about the future, but our track record is what 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 one should see. Thank you so much. Maybe it may, be, it may be a little different in M&A year because last year was an M&A year. This year, the start, start effect of M&A because OLX is not. Fully factored last year, so it may be a little better in M&A years, but otherwise it tends to be in that range. The track record is right. Thank you so much, and uh, all the best for the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have our next question from the line of Atul Bose from JMSL Financials. Please go ahead. Hi, Tim. Can you? Hello. Hear? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. So first of all, congratulations on good set of numbers. Uh, so my question is around OLX business that there has been a dip in margin for OLX in this quarter. So where do you see this margin stabilizing in future? Um, there's been a slight dip just because some costs, as we have indicated in the last earnings call, uh, have yeah. moved from discontinuing to continuing operations. Uh, but this is normal now. So this is a normalized. Now we see the margins will improve from here, uh, and margins will improve on account of revenue growth now. Um, I, I, I think all the costs are factored. This is probably a completely normal quarter for OLX, uh, and it's stable. So from here, as revenue grows, we believe that margin will continue to grow. And I have said earlier on the call that when revenue grows, we expect margins to outpace. And like I like to see in the consumer group, around 19 to 26, we just also would like to see, and we believe that OLX with revenue growth will see disproportionate margin growth as well. All right, and if you can share any. Color on how will the OLX revenue will shape up from long term view? Long term. So we had we had given some discussion on the call earlier, but there are two segments: the automotive, non-automotive. Obviously, our intent in the immediate term right now is to grow the automotive side, which is 45-50 percent of the business. And over the medium, I mean, I would say long, short term, this is after six to nine, twelve months, would be to grow the non-automotive side. Uh, but I, we all believe that OLX has very very strong growth potential. Uh, it's the acquisition itself was probably game changing for car trade as a group, and uh, obviously given us an opportunity to explore other segments outside automotive. Although we have continued to be very bullish about used cars with OLX, it also gives us a chance to do homes and jobs and uh, electronic two wheelers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Arpit Shah from Stadium Assets. Please go ahead. Hello. 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 Yeah, go ahead, Dr. Yeah, uh, just want, just wanted to understand, just wanted to understand the ESOP cost for FI25 would be around 25 crores. Um, yes, I think maybe around that. That's probably right. It's probably the same rate at this water. So, probably sure. Am I right? That's correct. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yeah, do you have any other question? No. Yeah, yeah. So in Q3 call, I think so we had highlighted there could be some one off costs in Q4 and Q1 pertaining to OLX. So can you quantify what is that number no, no. in Q No, no, we are not indicated that. And there is no one everything is done. There's no one off cost now. We had indicated that in Q three there was some one off cost. They're not there's no one off cost in Q four or Q one next year. No, like we were gonna see some depressed profitability in OLX business due to some reorganization which we had to complete in the auto classified business. So I'm just asking you that. No, no, there is nothing. I'm only sure am I correct? There's nothing now which I mean as you see the quarter of Q four, I think that's more than a stable state. There is no what further one off kind of cost. What we had indicated in the Q three results was that in Q four we would see a, a bit of a decline in the profit on account of of the CTX uh, overhead being absorbed by CLA, which was already factored in the Q4 results. And Q1, the only impact on it that we had indicated previously were increments because one of our largest costs is the employee cost. So those are the only two. Uh, but but I would I would I would just from from would would say that Q4 is now all factored in. At this yes. Point. Got it. Now I just wanted to understand the growth for all the three businesses. 
if i see the consumer business that i think so we should be growing at around 2x of the auto industry 2 to 3x remarketing business will depend on uh, the repo business which has been degrowing for a fair 24 how should we look at the growth part in olx uh, business or the auto classifieds and the non auto classifieds because yeah. there we have a big potential in terms of property electronics and everything which is there this is on the non auto side so how should we look at it should should we should it be a similar at consumer business kind of growth of 20% or should we look at it like a 30 40% kind of a number going ahead in next uh, couple of quarters the first you know the consumer group uh, this year actually has to go higher than the car industry does because the car industry is supposed to be zero to five so we're hoping that the consumer group growth is much much stronger than double the new car industry growth for sure that's one uh, but but it is it is um, you know a, a factor of growth in the car industry factor of growth on digital advertising factor of growth of digitalization of dealerships and manufacturers and all of that but we feel pretty optimistic about the position of the car industry or the new vehicle industry um shila madam are you right i think the two things one is to keep growing the retail business and the the fall in repossession is probably we hoping bottom out uh, but yeah it is to keep growing the retail business and repossession during the year will probably you know come back and volume will increase there. that will give us the growth and potential we need there uh on olx actually we are very bullish on growth and i don't want to put a percentage to it but olx is not governed by car manufacturers or car dealers or new car sales it's governed by a very fragmented used car market uh 45 50% of the revenue comes from the used car industry and the used car industry sells 5 to 6 million cars a year uh it's been robust and buoyant for the last 3 4 years uh there are thousands and thousands of dealers who use olx uh, for selling these cars OLX has reasonable relevance to these dealers. A large percentage of the dealer sales comes from OLX. It is the number one used car sales platform in the country, and we believe that OLX has a tremendous opportunity to grow this business. Um, and it, this growth, you know, is something we are extremely optimistic about. And one of the reasons we acquired OLX is for this growth. The second area of jobs, homes, especially uh, OLX is, is the second two categories in OLX, biggest category in terms of revenue. they uh, both these categories um olx is reasonably strong in b and c towns in india for both jobs and homes and and in special jo- home is mostly for low ticket size homes so it's got its own segment there and as i said in the not in the immediate term but probably in the short term it's a six months we're going to take a six months to you know put things behind this we see tremendous growth opportunities in both jobs and homes as well there are two other category which is bikes and electronics which is olx is to in fact today if any one of us want to sell a two wheeler or a mobile phone olx is probably the platform we would use and that's they again very very strong at, at that it is a category we believe also we can monitor extremely well in the next 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 years so we have lots of plans around all these categories and therefore we feel as i said i don't want to put a percentage of growth but we feel very optimistic about the growth at olx got it I just wanted to understand. Uh, like now, we have complete dominance on the used cars market. Like uh, from the car wall acquisition 2016, the way you started 2012, started car trade, and now we have OLX Auto also. So how how should we look at the J curve in terms of profitability? Because so by today, if I see your profitability, we are we are all probably on a run rate of a hundred crore back, maybe in FI 25. How how should we look at the J curve? Because we have worked really hard for the last. Six nine years to make this kind of a dominance. So when when should we expect to see a very big jump in profitability for a company? Because now you're a very really dominant player in the field that you're operating. How should we look at that? Yeah. So first, you know, we have good relevance with especially in used cars. We have strong relevance with used car dealers and used car consumers. Uh, I agree with you. I mean, with this 24 25 to a pack, that's probably the current run rate of profitability. We do believe that revenues. With growth of revenue, the profitability should rise and margins should rise. Uh, that's the nature of the business. The cost goes down in relation to revenues. So we feel very optimistic about profitability for the next one, two, three, four years, uh, clearly. And we also believe that one of the biggest opportunities within the company are used car classifieds. We do believe that with the acquisition of OLX, our ability to focus on used car classifieds with consumers and dealers becomes even stronger. Being OLX being the largest player of this. So clearly, you know, use car classifieds is important. Clearly, it will help drive revenue growth and profitability growth for the group. Use car classifieds, the business is already profitable for us. In fact, all our business are individually profitable. So we feel we are quite optimistic about profitability growth as well as revenue growth. God, thank you so much, Dasar. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir.
a reminder to all participants you may press star and want to ask questions we have a next question from the line of mr sahil doshi from thinkwise please go ahead uh, hi sir good afternoon uh, my hi, question sir. relates yeah, uh, my question is related to mr sahil uh, can you please use the handset uh, yeah uh, am i audible now yes yes uh, so the question relates to alex in terms of could you just help us understand uh, you know what is the kind of paid listings we have and what is the growth which we are seeing there organically and how much of it is driven by our co possibly i understand it's a little too early but uh, if you can just help us get a direction of that that will really help us understand the size of opportunity Sorry, can you just uh, the arc of sorry, I didn't get the last part. So that one yeah, arc. Yeah, if if you could possibly uh, bifurcate how much of it you are expecting from the arc pool driving. Uh, and uh, yes, yes. It's hard to give percentage, but we expect a growth in number of dealers, the number of people paying, as well as arc pool both. Okay, so could you possibly quantify what the number of paid listings we would have today in OLX? uh after that of now we are not you know we are sharing that it is in the in future we will try and say some of the metrics but it is one of it is probably the largest market place in india with consumer paid listing we have two sets of paid listings one is consumer listing for paid and dealer listing for paid uh we are still not sharing the total number of paid versus total number of listings uh you know going forward we'll we will we'll, we'll try and share some of the data uh but the objective is to grow all paid listers And the objective is also to grow our pool for paid lister. So, understood. Appreciate that, sir. Does this any sense on the average our pool? Meaning, what will be an average our pool for a paid listing? Or a listing? We we'll have to give it distinctly because it's by segment, right? So it could be a consumer listing a phone, or a consumer listing a car. It is different, and that's live on the website actually. The cost for it, uh, or it could be a dealer again listing a car, or a two wheeler, or a home, or a, so it's just it's hard to put an our pool to this. There's just different rates for different. Listers. Okay, understood. Appreciate that. And the second question is on the standalone business, uh, where we've seen a little bit of a dip compared to our past run rate of growth uh, at around fifteen percent YOI this quarter. Uh, yes. Any reason why this is happening is it because this is contrary to the fact that the number of users and the conversion, the organic traffic is actually gone up. So that is correct. Organ, organ, the organic traffic has gone up. uh you know it's higher because the sandwon business probably had the best operating revenue growth uh of the best revenue uh, uh operating revenue ever in its history so it is on a high last year basis well uh, the last year itself grew again at a very high pace and this is grown 20% by on by over the buff that base um but but also you got to remember that the growth in the car industry um you know from from a double more than double digit growth the previous year come down to 8% this in, in fy24 and only 2% in april right so there is also a bit of car industry growth factor here but as i said you know we feel pretty good about the industry state and the consumer group state and i, I think these are now normal growth rates about you know what what we showing in the track record we had in the last two years um mr final question from my end sir when do we see the uh, the initiative which we are working on the one click and you know A lot of uh, other initiatives around financing or uh, the card paid uh, or uh, in basically on the website which you're trying. When do you see that actually becoming meaningful in terms of monetization for the platform? So the one-click journey of giving an ability to someone buy a loan or a vehicle is going on. Uh, there are already some elements of that. Like for example, on financing is definitely live on car wale, bike wale, and and multiple other platforms. Where you can get a loan immediately approved. Uh, we also work with various car manufacturers uh, on their on their on with their dealerships and their websites uh, to allow these finance products to work. Um, and and that's a continuous exercise for us. It's already become significant in terms of customer experience. I mean, tens of thousands of people get approvals every every month on 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 this technology of of a financing or a fintech product. Um, and and you know the fintech product of the buy one thing has got two 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 parts of it. I think the first part we always said is about customer experience, so allowing consumers to have a superior financing or buying experience, which is what we primarily work on. The second part of it is can we monetize it better, and then the monetization becomes significant. I think the monetization is is, is something which is secondary to us right now around it. We've always said that the sole financing or buy one click is about customer experience and giving visibility 
for a consumer to have a quick convenient experience to do something on car wale bike pehle and even over like in next few quarters the financing product will get launched there as well so the intent is of course to take this buy in one kit journey across all our platforms including olex and the intent is also to get better customer experience monetization you know this customer is already monetized by their charging dealers and etc etc we're not worried about it our margins are also improving as increase revenue so we're not worried about that i think the biggest thing for us is how do we enhance the use of this product and then how do we make the experience of the journey of buying a vehicle or a used car or a two wheeler more easy by this one click financing or one click buying approach sure sir that is very helpful thank you so much yeah, thank you thank you thank you sir we have a next question from the line of aniket kulkarni from bms pl capital please go ahead Yeah, good afternoon and thank you for the opportunity so you have given your presentation that you are close to uh, 750 crores in cash balance here so how do you plan to utilize this cash and if you can give any outlay for the same for the current year or the next year yeah the cash which is there um, obviously the intent is to um, look at uh, future growth in the in the business olex is a very game changing acquisition for the group and obviously over the next 2 to 3 years as and when we find um, you know another opportunity um, we would look at it um, and if we don't we won't uh, and obviously in time will be over the over the period of time to distribute it back to uh, shareholders and stakeholders uh, as we go on so uh, the quick two uses i said one is probably in the near term or medium term if we do find another any opportunity um, as as you know we it takes a long time for us to find something after sri ram automobile 2018 Well, it was in 2023, so it was five years later. So until we find something and we feel really good, then we can turn it around and exploit all the synergies. Obviously, we won't make an acquisition. Um, and if we do not, uh, as you know, we are profitable, generating cash, and the 750 crores will keep growing. And we will obviously look at returning it at, uh, when it's possible to do to shareholders and stakeholders. Obviously. All right, Tosh. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have our next question from the line of Rahul Rahane from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Hi Rahul. Hey, 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 hey. Hi, hi. Uh, just, just wanted to get an update in terms of you know the absurd foray that we had in terms of certified vehicles. You know, uh, how how is that going? Because I think couple of quarters we kind of not mentioned the number of outlets etc. So just wanted to. Understand how that's going. What's the throughput over there? There's some bit. Actually, the uh, yeah, it's a good question. And the OLX acquisition actually changed this a little bit. Where um, OLX also had an equal number of or similar number of uh, certified stores, OLX stores. So uh, by by force, uh, obviously, number of stores we have doubled, which I think is to one in twenty or two in thirty today, uh, automatically. Uh, we are working on a very deep strategy on how to look at these stores. Um, um in relation to where you want to grow it number one of course but also do we want to combine the olex car wale store or or not or or this or the or the key stuff that we want to combine the stores at least uh, provide similar technology and features and products to both stores right so uh, you know that's a big game changing thing but but independently the car wale app store and signature stores are growing and independently we have acquired our olex so it's actually doubled our coverage uh, automatically um and it's something a very big focus area for the next 12 months to first come out of the product which is uniform for both olex and car wale and stores and the second is to of course then keep growing the stores both of these got it got it so currently they are running independently but you would yes. look to let's say there is a, someone who sold his vehicle on an olex the same car probably sometime down the line will also be available to sell on Parvali app show is that you are still working through the modalities of of how do the franchise store of Olex and Parvali get the same you know products and services uh, so it takes some business and the synergy you know come in and it takes some time but the fact that it's 220 coverage points makes us very excited about this area it's actually double a coverage automatically actually understood understood and and on a standalone basis in terms of app show uh, would they have kind of stabilized now in terms of you know profitability on a per store basis what's the throughput number of cars required per month any any you know kind of yeah, it's a, it's anyway it's a, it is it is it is quite stable but it's also 
uh, always, you know, because our, our um, we have no, it's an asset light business for us. So again, it's a, it's a reasonably high margin business. Uh, it doesn't, uh, there's very little cost against it except very little manpower. Then as I said, no marketing cost against it or no capex against it. So it's just variable manpower with, and pro, so which work on the processing system with stock. So we feel it's a very attractive business for us. And that's why we feel excited about the OLX acquisition. Not only have to use classified business, but definitely has the signature slash ad shop business as well. Got it. Got it. And, and just on the consumer piece, uh, if you could, you know, kind of say for the full year FY24 versus 23, a broad split between, you know, our revenues, how much would have come from auto manufacturers versus dealers? Yeah, it's pretty stable. Actually, we didn't, this is my mistake. We didn't do the original presentation, but it's pretty similar. 85-15 is new and used. OEM dealers about, you know, 65-35 uh, and Q4. So it's quite stable. Um, in fact, some of the other metrics were, you know, um, repo for the year is about 49%, uh, which, which is, uh, you know, down with 49% is slightly lower. So I think the percentage are quite stable to what they were the previous quarter, so we have not given it out. But but yeah, your question was on, on OEM versus dealer 65-35. 65-35. And this number, let's say, going forward, you know, in a scenario where now there is no, you know, kind of pent-up demand on the customer side, uh, one would assume that OEMs will need to spend more in terms of advertising, right, to, to you know, kind of attract demand. So this this proportion would ideally move in favor of OEMs. That would be the right way to think about it. No, we think the other way around. Logic we should move in side of dealers, but it's been quite stable over the last four or five quarters. So it's hard to say, but we actually believe that you know uh, it should be quite uh, favoring dealers as dealers advertise more. It is more from that angle. But as of now, it's been quite stable actually. To be honest. Okay. 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 Sure. 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 Thanks, Vinay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have our next question from the line of Nitin Shakdeh from Green Capital Single Family Office. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, Vinay. Good afternoon, Anisha. First of all, congratulations on the steady bounce back and the promise that there will be no further write-offs uh, on the business. So can we take that as uh, gospel that there shouldn't be any further uh, one-off write-offs because that spoils the annual trend? Um, actually, the only write-off we had was on discontinuing a business which we had said we had discontinuing. Otherwise, we never had, we might have one anyway. So, um, I don't want to talk about the future, but clearly, in the in the last couple of years, the only thing has really been that one discontinuing business, which is what company which we acquired and kept it classified and discussed with C2B. But there's no anticipated right topic, that is the question. Okay, great. And my second thing is, you spoke about briefly, but I just want to get a bit specific. Like, obviously, the cash and bank balance is far healthier right now uh, to what it was last year, and the closing position seems uh, fairly good. Uh, now, uh, you know, while you're doing acquiring and m &E and strategies with take time and, you know, uh, synergies built up over time, I just want you to consider specifically uh, a solution uh, for existing institutional as well as shareholders in terms of uh, can you evaluate uh, a buyback? Uh, if that's accurate towards your ratios and things like that, or a dividend strategy, because you know it has to be something given to shareholders as well. Considering you came in at 1500 on an IPO and it's you know already two and a half three years, there has to be something. You're constantly expanding the ESA pool, but I don't see you returning a lot more back to the shareholders that a significant push there. Any thoughts on that? Sure. Uh, I think two things. One is that in the IPO, we did only secondary, you know, no primary raise into the company, number one. Um, the second part is actually the, um, because the ESOP cost of the last three years has continuously come down. So that is um, that is the second part on 27 crores, down to 22 crores this year. The second part is that. The third was we, we we would absolutely look at, you know, buybacks and dividends as in, you know, we think that the money can be distributed back. Uh, there is regulation today uh, dictating what quantum of buybacks and dividend distribution we can do. So we obviously have to work within the guidelines of the regulation and, and we're restricted from doing certain things by regulation itself. Um, and you know, as and when the regulation allows us to distribute in terms of buyback or dividend, we'll absolutely would like to do so. Yeah, I mean, it's just a, a request. Uh, at the end of the day, the company knows better in terms of financial management and engineering. But I, I think you should consider that also significantly for this year, considering the start of the year and 
uh, put that as uh, how you could sort of work on that. That's just uh, yes. We, yeah, we will, but we can only do in the constraints of the regulation. That's all I'm saying. So, and the companies act. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. We have a next question from the line of Rishikesh Oja from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, for FY24, our net revenues have uh, grown by 32%, while our adjusted EBIT has grown 63%. So, can you indicate like how are we looking uh, our revenue growth at for, uh, let's say, for next two to three years? And will it be fair to say that our EBIT uh, growth would be 2x of revenue growth going ahead also? Um, yeah, we, we see a strong position on the revenue growth, etc. But and you also indicated earlier that, uh, you know, our, our profitability tends to grow at a much sharper pace than our revenue growth. It tends to be one and a half to two times, uh, you know, more, more, I would say more one and a half. If, if revenue goes 100 rupees, then profitability tends to go by, you know, 150. I think that is a, by, by if 100% and 150%, so, or 1% and one and a half percent. I think I would take that ratio. That's what tends to be sometimes better than that. Just now the current be better than that. But it tends to be a, that's the way it goes because our costs would go up along with our revenue growth, only at people cost. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have our next question from the line of Tushar Sarda from Athena Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and congratulations for a good set of numbers. Thank you, Tushar. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask on this Carvale. Uh, your revenue has grown, but your expenses have grown higher. Uh, and this is a fairly mature business. So, you know, how does the operating leverage uh, play out in this business? Um, so, if you see, um, the revenue growth is for the year is about 20% from operations, standalone, which is, car, which is a consumer group. And our expenses have grown by, I think, 16%. Are you sure that's correct? 16%. So the actual expenses are not grown the same way as revenue. That's why we have 41% growth in adjusted EBITDA. Okay. Uh, so if the actual way to look at it is revenue growth is 20%. Adjusted so when you look at the annual, uh, not the quarterly numbers, but quarterly. yeah, I'm looking at the annual numbers. And you can because annual, annual uh, revenue has grown 19%, and even employee cost has grown 19%. So you know, uh, uh, employee cost has, but as I, as, I, as I said, the marketing costs only have 7%. Other expenses are fifteen percent. So I agree. Yeah, but this is a business based on internet advertising, right? So why would employee cost go up? It's not necessarily. It's a, it's a mix of, of course, internet advertising for manufacturers and dealers, but it's also about adding more. All our all our technology development in the future goes to revenue expense. So if we develop future technologies in a tech product team, any expansion goes to employee cost. Any expansion of field force or call centers goes to also to employee cost. Uh, and that's the number one cost, which you know tends to go up. As I said, in a lot of companies, employee costs, marketing costs, operating costs all go up. In our case, variable manpower is what goes up, and we, you know, as, as the company keeps growing. And therefore, you see, even then, a 20% revenue from operation growth has got a 41% growth in adjusted EBITDA. Okay. Okay. And uh, uh, on the OLX acquisition, what is going to be your policy to write off the Cost of acquisition, are you going to expenses to PNL or would it carry on in the balance sheet? Uh, the OLEC acquisition is being captured as a, a, a in our goodwill. The acquisition the value itself is captured in our goodwill, which is reflecting in a balance sheet. And actually, uh, the objective is to give a return on that capital employed and not write it off because we obviously believe that uh, the, the acquisition itself is value creating. So. Okay, so no plans to amortize it? Uh, no, 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 there's no amortization of Google. No. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have our next question from the line of Vijay Jain from City. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thank you for the opportunity again. Uh, two follow-up questions. One, you know, uh, when I, uh, in general, for the standalone business, for the industry uh, overall, uh, you know, uh, just your comments on, uh, do you see dealers being subdued generally in F24 relative to other segments of the business across new and used businesses? And in general, whatever you can talk about, what you see on the dealer side uh, uh, for the industry. That's my first question. 
Do you see dealers mean in terms of supply or do you see them in terms of health of dealers? Just, just uh, in terms of their willingness to spend on platform uh, or on, uh, you know, your kinds of platforms, etc. Uh, for marketing um, and for acquiring vehicles in the, uh, in the used side, both those things. Yeah, we've generally seen, uh, this, I, I, we've been through a trend, I'll give a new car industry trend. So we basically, what we've seen till two, three years ago, uh, maybe two years ago, the dealers and manufacturers um, cutting, uh, are reluctant to spend because certain vehicles are not uh, available for supply. Uh, there were supply chain issues, et cetera, there were posts coming out of COVID. Uh, then the volumes of sales have gone up, and now demand seems good and supply seems good. So we're in a favorable situation where supply is available and demand is good as well. So dealers tend to spend, and manufacturers tend to spend two to increase sales because there is supply available. I think in the used car industry, uh, it's a very early days in monetization by itself. Even though OLX is very strong at it, uh, it's very, very early days. The used car dealers are still not got used to spending large amounts of money on advertising or selling a vehicle. Uh, um, and I think that change uh, is now ready to happen where uh, if dealers have to, you know, divert lots of their money towards digital advertising or spending money on selling the vehicles on platforms like OLX. So that trend is still... I would say probably going to start in India now. Got it. Thanks, Vinay. And uh, my last question on the standalone business side, um, uh, I, I, I know you can't, uh, you don't have a guidance as such on the growth side, but I'm just wondering uh, if there's a certain growth rate you need for margins to expand uh, in F25 versus, you know, what you have, what you had in F24. Is 15, 16% growth rate in the standalone business good enough for margins to expand? Um, Given I ask that because I obviously you know, whether you have ten percent or you have fifteen percent, you have twenty percent or thirty percent, margin expansion will probably happen in uh, the in all our businesses. I think internally also, and we said in the last call, we and you've seen this in the consumer group of nineteen to twenty six percent. We have given tremendous guidance to all our teams to improve margins. I think we we are a management or a company which is uh, not only focused on revenue growth and customer growth and customer satisfaction and delight in building great product and tech, but we also believe in working around and making sure our margins continuously improve. And even over the last three, four years, the company has continuously demonstrated how their margins have gone up as increased in revenue. So we believe that this year, in addition, we should see, uh, irrespective of our revenue growth, we should see margin growth. Got it. Thanks. That's very helpful, Vinay. Thank you. Yeah. Those are Thank you. Questions. Thank you. That would be the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Uh, I just want to thank all of you for joining in for this one-hour session. And we feel you know, pretty optimistic about the position of the company as demonstrated as well in the foundation, the base we have from our last financial results in the in Q4 of last year. Look forward to seeing you again in the next quarter of results. But thank you for joining in today. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Car Trade Tech Limited, we conclude this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.